Welcome back to another Android box review. I have a budget model in today for testing. This was sent in via Gearbest and this particular model is called the MeCool M8S Pro Plus. I've put the spec up on the screen. It is an entry level box but it's using the S905X chipset and you have a basic smattering of features. There's no dual band Wi-Fi on this but we do have a choice of models with regards to the 1 or 2 gig RAM or the 8 or 16 gig of storage. Just run through the details with this. We've got the included power adapter. That was just the quick look at the user manual. Have a HDMI cable as you'd expect. Not gold plated, most of them aren't, doesn't make much difference. And this is the newer style remote. They've added a few extra buttons and you also have a programmable section at the top so you can uh, map your TV remote controls with some of the basic functions and when you flip the remote over it gives you instructions on how to do that. It's very simple definitely an improvement over the previous remotes. Takes two AAA batteries not included. So overall not a bad little box in terms of appearance pretty basic but you do have that silver trim. On the back we have the AV out, the Ethernet port, HDMI and the power input. This doesn't support gigabit LAN it's just the 10100 style and on the side we have two USB ports and the micro SD card slot. Pretty much standard for an Android box, particularly in this price range, but probably adequate. And on the underside you'll see we have quite a few ventilation slots and the silicone pads. As far as the ventilation goes on this box, there's actually quite a lot of uh, slots all around the case, which is unusual. Uh, I'm just shining a torch so you can see the, you can see the circuit board inside. Just booting up the box now, you'll see it turns from a sort of pinkish to a blue once you've turned it on. And we go up through the boot up sequence. Fairly quick to boot. I'm looking at the 2 gig, 16 gigabyte version on this. Once we've gone through the snazzy animation, we get quite a plain looking but quite clear screen. I quite like it myself. Um, it's actually pretty well done. Go into the online manual here, which is both uh, either links to YouTube for video tutorials or as you saw there it just gives you a text guide through with pictures so you can actually um, get a pretty good idea on how to use the box even if you've never used one this is some of the YouTube tutorials it goes through nice feature if you've used them before not really going to be needed but handy for those that haven't as far as the apps goes not too much included in this pretty basic but you have the uh, newer version of Android which means you're going to get the pull out side menu here so that makes it a bit easier to change settings on the box you can also add up to eight on the shortcuts eight app shortcuts on the main screen the only complaint I'd have about the main screen is you've got quite a bit of wasted space but still it's completely uncluttered the TV center is actually Kodi it's just their own particular version that they've skinned but you can update to Kodi on this and as you'll see an update actually came up so it's running 17.3 but there is an update to 17.4 so there's no problems with Kodi you also get quite a few streams included with that a couple of other features you do have the Miracast and this is a special casting app as well so you can cast to Apple devices too I did check for updates um, over the air and there weren't any at the time of the review it seemed pretty stable you might want to update some of the apps just to be 100% sure on that and just showing you the apps again you can use the alternative menu button to clean data or uninstall depends on the app there aren't a whole bunch of them included which is perfectly fine for me I don't like a, a huge number of apps because I end up removing most of them anyway pretty easy to navigate through the settings you do have a status bar the only problem that I found was once you've dismissed it that you can't actually bring it back um, not exactly sure why that is could be a bug but this will only really probably be an issue if you're using the air mouse. I definitely recommend getting one of those. If you go into the more settings, it takes you into the standard Android look. Although you're probably rarely going to need to go into that because most of the settings are available with the slide out bar on the right. Good amount of storage left. It's only using about four gig out of the box, but you can always add the micro SD card if you need to. Personally, don't think most people will need to on this. That'll probably be enough particularly if you're just streaming, it's only if you install a lot of games. 
there's no real complaints as far as the layout goes and the spec the spec for the price is actually okay it's pretty decent good step up from the super budget boxes obviously it's not a high-end box so we're going to run some tests on that to show you the navigation bar there you'll have to go back into the menu to re-enable that hopefully they'll fix that with an update on to my benchmark test now geekbench 4 just run through this and we've got a fairly decent score of around about 1600 and that's pretty much in line with the S905X chipset so a decent step up above the entry level boxes. Running my 3D benchmark now I do the same tests for all the boxes that I look at and we've got a score of around about 18.4 nothing particularly to get excited about it's okay for basic gaming I think the streaming side is going to be more important to most people and this box is rooted out of the box so you don't have to do anything with that you can play around if you wish there's also a setting here an app just to show you what the DRM settings are not really sure why they included that but uh, onto the YouTube I would definitely update that app because it can be a bit buggy but no problems at all playing back in full HD on the YouTube app. You can see there I've got good frame rates as well so no issues at all with the YouTube at full HD. Some of the boxes only play at 720p and the Wi-Fi was also good. I've had slightly quicker uploads but the download speeds were decent above average. So coming up with a few thoughts on the MAS Pro I'm just showing you some of the icons here that are filled up on the menu screen. I quite like the menu screen myself but it is a bit simplistic um, but it's uncluttered so I don't really see a problem with that. Any downsides with this is you don't get Bluetooth, you also have single band Wi-Fi, perhaps they're not particularly important for users particularly at this price point and the general streaming performance was very good, you also have 4K support as well. So there's nothing to really complain about for the price point anyway. Um, I think it's a pretty decent little offering but there are quite a few of these around so do have a look at some of my other reviews just to see what you're looking for. For example if you're gaming you might want something a little bit quicker but for general streaming um, I definitely go for the 2 gig version 16 gig storage and you should be pretty happy. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch up with you soon.